we are at the final five. So number one, if you could have any other job outside of the arts, what would it be? Oh my goodness. Okay. I think I would either be a elementary school or high school teacher teaching like English or okay. language arts, or I have said multiple times, a flight attendant. It's just so <laughs> is, exciting to me. Is it the know. travel? Is that what does it? I think it's the travel. I think it's, I think it's the combination of kind of that consistent, same thing every shift, which I do like. I like kind of that mundane, you know, task rabbit type situation. But I think it is the idea of being able to travel freely, kind of having like rain over my domain, but also getting to meet new people every day. I I don't know. It's just something so interesting to me about it. Right. Uh, yeah. I'm sure flight attendants get to see the best and worst of humanity <laughs> in those planes. Uh, indeed. <laughs> Especially right now. My goodness. Right. Right. Ooh. All right. Number two, what is a bucket list role or show that you still hope to do one day? So I would say bucket list dream roles yet to play Nellie Fabish in um, South Pacific. Always been a dream role. Um, also, Audrey in Little Shop of Horrors is one that I'm dying to sink my teeth into. I definitely at some point would love to take a stab at Jenna in Waitress. I think I could navigate that one pretty good and then the ultimate which I got to cover at paper mill you know when I was 25 but I would really love here sometime in the next decade to play Maria in the sound of music that's the pinnacle I think of of just who I am as a human I was raised doing that show I did it professionally three times before I was Gretel and Brigida, then Louisa, and then covered, you know, Maria at Paper Mill. So I just, um, I would, I would love to play that role for many reasons, but also uh, one of my parents' dear friends is the late Rebecca Luker. And uh, they grew up doing summer stock together right after she was Miss Alabama. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was nine playing Brigida, we came up to New York to visit with her and she got us house seats for Sound of Music and, you know, obviously took the family backstage and it was a really cool moment for my parents and for me as well. And then what was so cool when I went to see Ashley Brown, CCM alum, starring in Mary Poppins on Broadway and said hello to her backstage. Then I got to say hello to Rebecca again, kind of when I was in, you know, more of my prime as an adult. He was, she was like, you are Dana and Ernie's daughter. And it was very sweet. She was like, next time, let's do this together. And that was my last personal interaction with her, but a great memory to have. Yeah. Yeah. She, she's a wonderful human being. I, my very, wonderful. my very first summer stock season. In fact, my very first professional show was with Rebecca Luker. I was, oh I was yeah, it, it was doing Kismet. And she was absolutely, yeah. Was she singing Bubbles, Bangles? No, she, she, she was singing, And This Is My Beloved. Oh, yes, that one, yes. Just stunningly gorgeous. Stunning. Yeah, oh. yeah. So, so she, she holds a very special place. And, and then, then I, I, I saw her years later, whenever I was in New York and this is when she was still with Gregory Jabara, but saw him and damn Yankees. And then basically he, you know, he, he remembered me because I, as I met him at that time, uh, back, back in summer stock days and he remembered me and then he was actually going to see Rebecca. So I went with him to, to Rebecca, who's, I forget what show she was doing at the time. And so got to meet her and see her again, say hello. So it's just I a love great, it. just a, a, a great memory there. I love that. Yeah. Now, 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 speaking of which, this leads us directly into number three, who is it that you look up to a, a mentor or someone who inspires you? Um, growing up, it was definitely uh, the home studio owner of my dance studio, Sandra Rivera. She taught me how to teach in a loving way and to get a great product out of people mm. in just by creating um, an incredible environment. I would be remiss if I didn't mention um, actually a woman who I knew she had a profound effect on me, but um, she actually also went to CCM 
uh, choreographed multiple shows for my parents and myself at Derby Dinner Playhouse. Barb F. Cullen, um, she recently passed as well. And I just feel so sad for my mom that she lost two of her closest girlfriends. Um, but, you know, Barb's energy was definitely something that I looked up to as far as how she like carried the room um, growing up as well as Gail Benedict, who was my musical theater teacher at the Performing Arts High School. And those those mentors, I mean, they don't go away even though, you know, you re uh, reach a professional level, you know? So all those women still play a big part of my life today or in memory of. And then I'd say, um, from adult parts of my life, I really look up to Reese Witherspoon um, for multiple reasons, um, type-wise and acting, but just also how she has so bravely navigated her career. And I do, I, I consider it a bit of a pat on the back that it's like what she's doing with Hello Sunshine, I've been doing with my production company for even longer than she has been in business. <laughs> and, um, but it's cool to see someone with that platform doing it and it encourages me once again stay in my lane, do my thing. I'm on the right path, you know? Exactly. So, Reese Witherspoon for sure. Now, number four, what is a uh, personal lesson that took you a while to learn or maybe one that you're still learning to this day? Oof. That um, I have value. I know that sounds so um, deep, but also simple. Um, I think for a long time, I struggled with giving myself away too freely in every way, in every corner of my life, but especially when it came to creativity and my creative business. And because I did come from a strict acting background, you know, it's always like, people want to work with you or people want you to do this and that. And therefore I kind of like lost myself in wanting to be a people pleaser and helper and do things for others. And so I think realizing that what I do have, I do believe your, um, I read this the other day, that energy is your currency. And sometimes it's like, if we give it away too freely or to the wrong people, which I have, in multiple areas of my life, life, especially in creative business, I've made some very sad mistakes um, and shared things with people and gotten burned. But um, just that I do have value and that that value is worthy of being protected, is worthy of my discernment and taking my time. Yeah, yeah. Well, what would you say as far as you, you mentioned briefly that you shared something and it may have backfired on you or may have aff affected a, a relationship or, or something. How did you then get past that to then be honest yeah. and open again? Well, and what's crazy is that kind of creative work-life betrayal happened at the same time my father passed. Mm. When it rains, um, it pours, right? when it rains, it pours and it gutted me out. So for me, allowing myself to take the time to heal, to then get back up, that's really sacred time. And that's something that I think when we find ourselves personally or in business in a challenging situation, it's like, we want to, we want to rush right through the hurt. We want to rush right through the anger because we just want to be productive, right? And you got to sit in it. Mm -hmm. You got to feel it all in order, right? For you to then slowly get back up and rise again and, and, and be ready because it takes time and that is okay. You are worthy of that time. You are worthy of taking that time to heal, worthy of using discernment. You are worthy of taking time to make a business decision, to reflect upon it. You know, you you don't have to just jump into thing all the into things all the time. And that is something that I think I will be learning for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's something, it's one of those things that we have to constantly relearn. Over and Absolutely. over again. Yeah. Over and over. Well, yeah. this is a perfect segue to number five, which is what is the most useful 
advice that you've received? To focus on my own thing um, and not worry about the noise around me. Uh, I think Corwin Hodge told me that he had gone to CCM, but I was raised with him at the theater in Louisville. Um, he told me that he's like, just keep keep your head to the ground, do your work. Don't be distracted by what everybody else is doing. And to me, I kind of translated that over the years to stay in your lane. Um, and I would say, yeah, just people are correct when they say that education is so important. And whether it's your collegiate education, having the opportunity to go to a performing arts high school, or just continuing to always train and grow and learn while you're a working professional, I just think that's really important to always continue to push yourself to grow, to get new mentors, to get new hobbies, um, or or you do. It's like you, you shrivel up, you know? We wanna, wanna stay well-oiled and inspired. And I just, for me, always being a forever student is it's important. And so I'm glad that people have pushed the importance of education in my lifetime.